nation. We live in an hour in a day where there, unfortunately, is a uh, growing anti-Semitism. And uh, I see this in churches, I see this in, uh, here in the West, and especially in Europe. And Genesis 12, we have what is called the Abrahamic Covenant. And uh, it is a covenant, a promise to Abraham regarding land, regarding through him will come the Messiah, the Mashiach. And uh, this is a covenant that unfortunately is being forgotten in evangelical circles today. But in Genesis 12, verse 3, this is part of the Abrahamic covenant and a, a, a verse that you are very familiar with, church. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. So let's take a look at a little bit of what we do. And, uh, and I have two screens here and something technical, and you know something's going to go wrong with this. You know that I'm going to hit a wrong button. But follow me now. This is where we work. Uh, we work in the Middle East uh, directly. Uh, this is the center of the world, according to the rabbis, the center of the universe. The rabbis believe that the first rock God made when he created the earth was Mount Moriah, where the temple stood, where Abraham offered up Isaac, um, where Jesus one day will rule and reign for a thousand years. This is where we work. Uh, we take uh, lead tours, uh, small groups, large groups, and I, I want to draw attention to two particular groups here uh, uh, that uh, we had here not too long ago. One small group was a group of men. We took them through all the holy places and we went to places we normally would not go if we had a mixed group. We took them up close and personal to the border of Gaza and they saw the, some of the carnage there on the outskirts of Syria. But we were in a van for many days and we did not know, it was rather odoriferous inside the van. And, uh, and we didn't know until someone brought to our attention when we got out of the van, this green cloud kind of followed us. Anyway, but these guys were brilliant. Uh, there, there was a policeman, uh, a football coach, uh, a pastor, a city manager, myself, a postal worker, and the driver. And it, it was just quite brilliant. But several months later, so we had all guys. First time I had just simply men with, with us. Uh, but the next group was this. Look at these ladies. It was all women. I asked my driver, I said, I've, I've brought you large, gr large groups, small groups, men's groups, now women's group. I said, which one was harder? I won't tell you what he said. But... Uh, Anyway, but we told the ladies, we told them if we wanted to leave, it was a half hour earlier. The, anyway, never mind. The, um, and they got on time. Anyway, but these ladies, they were not in Kansas anymore. They were very genteel, okay? And about day three, they would put the bandana around their head, lock and load. These ladies were just incredible. And when we got to the children that we helped feed, it was such a beautiful thing. Their maternal instinct kicked in and it was just one of those God moments. These ladies were incredible. So we take, take tours and so forth. Um, our focus, one of our primary focuses um, is simply feeding the children. If you were to Google this, this will shock you. It shocks a lot of people. Uh, there are one in three children in Israel proper today who are not eating a meal. And there's been all kind of reports regarding this. And finally, finally, ladies and gentlemen, a dignitary has spoken up. The former prime minister and president of Israel, Shimon Perez, a couple of weeks ago, finally made a statement, basically staying, saying that, you know, shame on us, Israel, for letting this happen. So it, there's all kinds of reports. Now, it's official in terms of the, the politics of Israel, one in three kids are not eating a meal. Can you imagine? And it depends on what report you read. That, that means anywhere between 800,000 up to a million children in a country of seven million are not eating a meal tonight. So we minister to kids. Uh, we work both sides of the wall. Uh, this is the infamous uh, security wall. It's not to keep anybody out, but there are checkpoints to bring folks through checkpoints to have proper paperwork. What a concept to have proper paperwork to get into the country and to catch the bad guys, stop the bad guys from coming in. But that is the wall. Uh, we work with rabbis. Uh, this, this beloved rabbi, he had a, a little school. You know how we have Christian schools? Uh, they have Jewish schools. And uh, he had preschoolers and uh, elementary school kids. 
age uh, school kids and uh, we help them provide meals for these children. We work with uh, uh, religious Jews, Jews who know Jesus, Jews who do not know Jesus. We work with secular organizations in Israel. We work with religious organizations, Christian organizations in Israel. We feed Muslims, but we will not work with Muslim organizations, uh, for, you understand, uh, for obvious reasons. But this is who we work with. We work with some congregations also in Israel, just a handful, and uh, uh, we feed kids, and indeed we present the gospel, and uh, that, that's our primary focus. Uh, we work with Arab pastors. How many have heard the name Brother Andrew, God Spunkler, just out of curiosity? The gentleman in the middle there is Brother Andrew. And I had an opportunity to work with him for several days. Uh, the guy on the left is me. Uh, when I go to Israel, I grow that, uh, to cover up ugly, and for other reasons. And, uh, but what an amazing experience to be with Brother Andrew, God Smuggler. And, and if you don't know who he is, I encourage you to buy a book entitled God Smuggler, and I'll tell you his story. An amazing man. I like working with the Apostle Paul, just an amazing man. Um, at the end of the day, by way of introduction here, uh, you have four basketball stadiums here. If you were to fill each stadium up with 25,000 people, four stadiums, you have 100,000 people. At the end of the day, uh, through your prayers and support and encouragement the, over the last few years, uh, it is, uh, this is what it looks like. If you were to fill these four stadiums up with Jews and Arabs from the Middle East, it is as though we presented each one with a meal and in some fashion presented the gospel verbally or written or otherwise. And over 100,000 meals have been provided uh, for uh, the people in the state of Israel and the West Bank. That's what it looks like. On, and out of a result of that, thousands of conversations, uh, or thousands of families, hundreds of conversations, and we have a couple of dozen folks basically have come forward in faith, which is a very big deal if they're Muslim, and it's also a very big deal if they're Jewish, they come forward to confess and to believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus, and uh, many of them are baptized in the Jordan and they end up in local congregations in Israel. That's what we do. Technical, there we go. All right. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said this. Some of you may recall a couple of months ago there was an incident in France where Jews were killed. And Netanyahu said this, that Israel is the only place where Jews can truly feel safe. He said, Jews deserve security in every country, but we say to our Jewish brothers and sisters, Israel is your home. When he said that, the Europeans became very upset, the French particularly, and, but the fact remains, ladies and gentlemen, that the prophets say that in the context of the latter days, latter years, that Jews from all over the world will go back to Israel. There are now more Jews living in Israel than any country in the world. That changed just a few years ago. It used to be there were more Jews here in the, uh, the United States, but that has changed. You go there, you'll meet Jews from the former Soviet Union, uh, Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, North America, South America, all over the world. Jews are returning home. Some for religious reasons, some don't know why. They just feel compelled, but you and I know why. The prophets say that this would happen. But there's a growing hatred against the Jews. Why the world hates the Jews? Pharaoh, as you know, tried to exterminate the Jews. You know the story of Moses in the basket down the Nile River. Ended up being in Pharaoh's home. God raised up Moses to lead the Jews out of Egypt. The Exodus, the Passover happened. Pharaoh failed. Haman, the book of Esther. He was upset that Mordecai would not bow down to give homage to him. He became upset, wanted to eradicate the Jews. God raised up a beautiful young lady by the name of Esther, Queen Esther. Haman failed to eradicate the Jews. Look at this guy. That's me before coffee in the morning. 
You think I'm kidding? <laughs> no, no. Herod. He heard that the king of the Jews was born. The wise men came. Where is he to be born? Found out Bethlehem. He attempted to kill Yeshua, the baby Jesus. He killed all boys two years of age and younger. And if you've been to the Holy Land, if you've been to Bethlehem, you've been to the place where Mary gave birth to Yeshua. And right next to the place is a little cemetery with about 40 some graves, little teeny tiny graves. These are the graves of the children that Herod killed. He failed. He did not kill Yeshua. As you know, Joseph took Mary, Mary and Jesus to Egypt. Herod failed. Then there's this guy, Hitler. He almost did it. You know the story. He almost eradicated the Jews from Europe. Almost did it. Then the Allies came. He failed. Then you have these guys. These guys are a real and present danger. I told the last hour, you may recall it historically, remember Chamberlain from Britain went to Germany, came back, reported to Churchill and all, and he said, uh, you don't have to worry about Hitler. He's a peaceful man. <laughs> Gee, how stupid. Hey, he's a peaceful man. And then right after that, he invaded Poland. There are those who say ISIS are just a bunch of thugs in pickup trucks and have got No, no, no. They have billions of dollars at their disposal. They have uh, 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 an army of around 40,000 fundamentalists. They are beheading people. These are the Coptic Christians. Moments after this photo was taken, they beheaded these people. They kill Christians, they kill children, they hate the Jew. And their ultimate goal is Jerusalem. These folks are real, these folks are dangerous. That's why you see security throughout Israel, such as this, when this photo was taken. There were some skirmishes here in Jerusalem, up on the Temple Mount in Ramallah. There were some folks killed up in Ramallah. Fortunately, there, were no one, there was no one killed here in Jerusalem. But you see this everywhere. You see this everywhere. You have to. Hezbollah, the party of God. They're up in Lebanon. They have uh, some 50,000 rockets aimed at Israel, even as we speak. The children want to emulate these thugs. These are kids with AK-47s. Do you see that? Hamas. These guys are in Gaza. You know what the word Hamas means? It's Hebrew taken from Obadiah verse 10. Violence it means. What a slap. What an insult to the nation Israel. They, they, they call themselves Hamas. Violence. The children, when a siren goes off, when I was here last time a couple of years ago, I, I believe I had shown you a congregation a video. When a siren goes off, uh, a rocket is coming, and people have uh, 15 seconds to find shelter. Those of you who were born in the 50s and went to school in the 60s, you remember when we had uh, drills uh, regarding the, the atomic bombs? And we, they, we went under the desk, how silly that was. Uh, but we, we, we were doing something, and this is what the children do today in Israel. They have 15 seconds. There are protective rooms. There are bomb shelters. Do you realize some 30,000 rockets have hit Israel from Hamas, from Gaza? You know that, right? You heard that on Fox News? Yes? You heard that on CNN? I don't think so. All you have to do is Google that information. This is what happens. This is a school. This is a kibbutz, a couple of miles from Gaza City. Classroom was hit by one of the rockets. This is what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Please understand, this is real. We were there in February, the first time I've seen this. You have security everywhere, and if you've been there, there are two Israels, by the way. The one that you see on a tour, 
Everybody wants the tourists to be safe, and you'll see the holy sites, and rightfully so, and you're forever changed. But then there's Israel, Israel, the people, and they know this happens. When we were there, you have plain clothes security, police, uh, soldiers everywhere. Uh, we saw someone, he didn't have a uniform on, but he was holding a Glock in his hand, a pistol, a, a hand weapon in his hand. And I had a group of people who said, step back, I said, I've never seen this before. Some guy just walking through the old city with his, with his gun down by his leg startled us. I and mean, I don't get startled that easily. I've been there so many times. But this startled me. I said, this could be, who knows what this is? Only to walk further into the city to see police doing the same thing. We were on a train going from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv, even the security on the train walking up and down the aisle holding his Glock. The tension is so severe and so thick these days, and it's daunting to hear. You, all, you know about Hezbollah up north, you know about Hamas in Gaza, you know about those guys, you know about Iran, you know all about... Now we have the conversations like this. 30 minutes that way is ISIS. 30 minutes that way is... I think it took 30 minutes to get from the airport to here. 30 minutes that way is ISIS. That's why they're holding their guns in their hand, such as they are now. That's my beloved in the middle. These are soldiers. They just graduated high school. When everyone graduates high school in Israel, you're in the military. Every 17, 18 year old, they graduate, male, female, doesn't matter, they're in the military. These young girls, they broke my heart. I mean, they look like kids, do they not? This could be like your grandkids. They, they, these are kids, but make no mistake, these women are soldiers. They will die for Israel. They will fight ISIS. They will fight Hezbollah. They will fight Hamas. But this is who they are. These are the soldiers. There are 200,000 rockets aimed at Israel right now, according to the Homeland Defense Minister of Israel. 200,000 rockets. Why the hatred? We're going to look at it theologically and practically here. But before we do, I want you to see a visual. Look, at the, look, how, look how Israel is grabbing all the land. It's a joke, folks. These, do you see a map here? This is a map of the Arab nations of the world. And then that little thing there, a uh, little, I think it's yellow, that's Israel. To put it in perspective, you take half of the landmass area of Canada, half of the landmass area of Mexico, and all of the landmass area of the United States, and you have the landmass area of the 22 plus Arab nations of the world. You take New Jersey, you take Maryland, or a large county in Texas, and you have Israel. They're grabbing land, aren't they? I don't think so. Not as the world projects. One of the things we do is minister to Holocaust survivors. Not only are there one in three children in Israel not eating, out of approximately 100, or I'm sorry, approximately 200,000 Holocaust survivors in Israel, 50,000 of which are not eating a meal. 50,000. This lady here is Shoshana. She's one of the ladies that we help feed. When this photo was taken, she's 94 years old. She's 96 now. She wanted to tell us her story, and we had some folks that were with us, and she's telling us her story. And she asked me, she says, will you please tell my story to those in America? I said, I will. When she was 21 years old, the Nazis came, took her, her family, killed her mother, father, grandparents, siblings, but she was a beautiful young lady, 21 years old, just beautiful. She was very graphic in what she told, what she shared. She said the soldiers raped her. They urinated on her. They defecated on her. They tied her up, kicked her. They stepped on her stomach. They stood on her stomach. They experimented on her every which way, over and over and over 
and over and over again. By the time she got done telling her story, there wasn't a dry eye. You got to understand, I had nothing at that point. I said Shoshana. Shoshana means rose, by the way, in Hebrew. It means rose. So this is rose or Shoshana. I said, Shoshana, how, how could you forgive the soldiers? She paused and she said, yes. She said, I had to or else the bitterness would have killed me. I said, how could you do that? How, how is that possible? Now listen, now she does not know Jesus. Listen to her words. She said, Adonai helped me. Adonai is how the Jews would say the name of God. Adonai helped me. We talked with her for a while about the Mashiach, about the Messiah, and she, she nodded. Pray for Shoshana, would you? She's now 96 years old. She's not going to be with us much longer. Would you pray for her that she comes to know the Lord? She's one of hundreds that we help feed. Okay, why? Why the hatred? Well, basically the Abrahamic covenant I will bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. Abraham, through you will come the Messiah, through you, this land. I'm going to give you this land. The world hates the Jew because they hate the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob became flesh and dwelt among us. If they hate the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they hate. Jesus. They don't like you. They try to thwart God's plan. The world has always done that from Pharaoh, Haman, Herod, Hitler, Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, and all the rest. Here's one. For the records, <laughs> what does the world hate the Jew? Oh, man. Didn't Jesus say this? He says, the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to me. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus is Jewish, is he not? A Jew will judge the world. Why does the world hate the Jew? The scripture says that the world will divide up the land of Israel in the latter days. Joel 3, if you were to read that, you will discover the context is Armageddon. And one of the reasons for Armageddon is that God is upset that the world has divided up the land that was promised to the descendants of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. The world will divide up the land of Israel. All you have to do is listen to the news these days. And it's about the land. Now here's why nations will rise up against Israel. And if you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, you will read about the coalition of nations that will come against Israel. Hasn't happened yet, but it will happen. And the key, the leader of the coalition specifically is Persia, which today we call Iran led and fed and empowered by some power from the north, Gog, Magog, Meshach, and Tubal. Magog means the roof or the ceiling of the world, a power far north. Today we call that land area Russia. It could have a different name when that war takes place, but right now it's called Russia up there. But the, the armies of the world, or the, this coalition, if you read it, is basically the nations that surround Israel will come against Israel. The rabbis believe that the Messiah will come out of this battle. Evangelical scholars believe that when this battle takes place, Jesus is soon returning. Today, the rabbis say it will happen soon. 
And in fact, a couple of years ago during the, uh, the, the war with Hezbollah, there, there are two local stations in Israel, not, you know, it's like CBS, ABC, and Channel 2, the news anchor, Channel 2, reported on the war, and it, can you imagine this? Would be, this would be like, uh, I don't know who's, that Dan Rather or Walter Cronkite or someone. They announced that they mentioned the Battle of Gog and Magog, this battle in Ezekiel 38 and 39. The news people of Israel, national television, referred to it as this could be a precursor of events leading up to the war of Gog and Magog. Eventually, all nations will turn against Israel. And this breaks my heart. If you read the prophet Zechariah, all nations will turn against Israel, even the United States of America. The United States is Israel's strongest ally. But there's a biblical principle that Jesus gives in Matthew 12, where he said, he that is not with me is against me. He that gathers not with me scatters abroad. The principle is this. There are no, it's not black or white. You're either my friend or you're not. You're either with me or you're not. It could look something like this, because the scripture says all nations will turn against Israel. It could look something like this, ladies and gentlemen, that Israel will do something. Today, maybe they'll do something against Iran. Maybe they'll do something against Syria or ISIS. Who knows what they'll do? Maybe it's the Temple Mount. I have my theories, you have your theories. But Israel's going to do something that even their strongest ally, the United States, whoever's in office, it doesn't matter if they're Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. Whoever is in office is going to go something like this. Israel, we're, we'll, give you, we'll give you weapons, guns, stuff, but on this one, you're on your own. We're out. If we remain neutral, technically, we're against. One day, one day all nations will turn against Jerusalem, according to the prophets. Practically, this battle against God's ancient people began in Genesis 3, where God says to Satan, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, talking about the coming Messiah. That war has been going on ever since. Satan has tried to derail that plan. You read Isaiah 14, you read about his pride where he says, I will ascend, I will be like God, I will stop God at what he's doing, I want to be the, the top cheese here, I want to be the head. If the world could eradicate the Jew, then God would be a liar. Now let me put it in perspective here. There are approximately seven billion people on the planet. Seven billion. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, there is only approximately 20 million Jews worldwide? If Satan could eradicate the Jew, God would be a liar. Why do I say that? In Jeremiah 31, you read where God says through the prophet, as long as there are stars in the sky, there will be Jews. When Abraham was confused about the promise that he would have a son and Sarah was still barren, God took Abraham out in Genesis 15. He says, Abraham, look up at the stars. Again, the stars. He says, if you can number them, you'll understand how your seed, what your seed will be. If there are no Jews, God is a liar. Who would believe in a God of the Mayans? There are no Mayans. If the Jews were eradicated, and, and we went over, folks have tried, every nation that has gone up against Israel, you know, I'll bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, every empire throughout history that went up against Israel became an empire in the dust. They lost. There's a reason for that. If Satan could eradicate the Jew, you, you, you just stay home, folks. You take this book. How many have a Bible here? If you, maybe you have it on your iPhone or iPad. You got some. You have a scripture. This is a Jewish book with Jewish prophets, priests, and kings about a Jewish Messiah, about a Jewish kingdom. Thy kingdom come is not going to be in Washington. Headquarters is going to be in Jerusalem. Jewish book about a Jewish Messiah given to the whole world. If Satan could eradicate the Jew, God is a liar. And ladies and gentlemen, God is not a liar. I will bless those that bless thee. 
Because what we do, we feed kids, one in three. The children we minister to, and we'll talk a little more about that this afternoon as, as we talk about the cross tonight through Jewish eyes, but the, the children, ages three to seven, by the way, preschoolers, they're either orphaned, been sexually, uh, physically, mentally abused in some capacity, they're hungry, we feed them, we also bring them educational material. Look at this one. She's knee high. She dressed in her best. You know what the kids call me? They call me Saba, which means grandfather. I put this up, this particular photo up on our Facebook page, and I encourage you to check out our Facebook page and look at all this stuff. There are haters out there. I put this photo up saying, we feed these children, one in three kids, we, you know, pray for us, help us if you can, blah, blah, blah. On the, 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 the anti-Semitic types came out, and you can read it for yourself, the vile hatred. This photo of this little girl, in fact, that one in three kids are in need, brought out the haters. Can you imagine that? We live in a really messed up world. <laughs> we do. And there's growing anti-Semitism. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is found in Christ. There is the answer in peace in this. So what we do, we stand with Israel. We help feed their kids. We help feed the Holocaust survivors. And that is a vehicle that opens up the door for us to present the gospel. And it works. It works. We're not building any buildings or things of that nature. We feed people and present the gospel. That's what we do. So I asked, if you remember anything else this morning, remember the three things the one brother here mentioned? It's, it's part of our ministry mantra, if you will. Remember, time is short. Life is precious. Those Holocaust survivors are precious in the sight of God. Shoshana is precious and so fragile in the sight of God. These little ones are so precious. Time is short, life is precious, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. May we be found faithful. And I ask three things of you before I turn it over to the beloved pastor. Number one, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, would you? The world hates the Jew. Just Google it. You'll see the statistics will shock you. The world is blaming Israel and will blame Israel. War is coming. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. If you wake up in the middle of the night after eating the pizza and heartburn or whatever it is, and if you think of us, I covet your prayers for safety, wisdom, that God would give us souls for our labor because sometimes we're in dangerous places. And third, if God touches your heart to help to underwrite us, I just simply ask you to be faithful to God. We need your help, obviously. Like I said, our principal focus is feeding the children, feeding the Holocaust survivors, and presenting the gospel. That's what we do. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let me know what book you want. God bless you, Grace Bible, for standing. You're one of the remaining churches that stand with Israel. May God bless you for it. Pastor.